Let's see. Did we also lose connection on the Apple Watch? It disconnected. Hello and welcome to CEO's Projects. This is part two of the Faraday cage versus radios and Bluetooth speakers. So, in this we're going to see if this Faraday cage with a little bit of a top on it, which is literally just some aluminum foil that's crumpled up, can block Bluetooth signals. In movies you see that people do it to block anything from connecting to their device. And with things like AirTags nowadays working with Bluetooth, you can see if putting your phone in a just a cheap thing of aluminum will actually work. So first thing we have connected to is this Bluetooth speaker that's great for uh, connecting wireless headphones to your computer uh, wirelessly. I actually love this thing a huge amount. And right now we have it connected using the same spider, which is a, just a weird aux splitter uh, like last time, to the Bluetooth speaker, which we also will be testing. So this one, we're actually gonna put inside of the tin foil, or sorry, aluminum foil, this one, we're actually gonna put inside of the aluminum foil, and this one, we're actually gonna put the phone inside and see how it works. Also, we'll be able to see because if my uh, Apple Watch doesn't connect. So, we're gonna play the music. Okay, so. I think that I paused it. Okay, I <laughs> skipped the song. <laughs> Whoops. So. Okay, so by the look of it, tinfoil does not work on the cheap transmitter. Now, for the even cheaper Bluetooth speaker. So, thankfully, all I need to do is switch. Is just take this. I love how that works. And change which thing we're outputting to. So you can still hear it. It's not as great. I'm actually gonna take this apart in a later video. So it's gonna make it nice and loud. Interesting. Wait. Wait, what? You heard it. Stop for a second. It actually is working, what the heck? You can hear the signal actually breaking up. That's it. So it actually does work. Wait, so then why did it work with... You see how it's cutting in intermittently? So if I make sure that nothing, like there's no holes, it actually does block it. So it does work. It actually does work. Oh, that's awesome. Because the buttons and to control it are all on this side, so I'm not even squishing on the buttons to pause it. And as you can hear, I'm not pausing it and stopping it, it's actually cutting out intermittently. I bet you good money that this is going to get copyrighted, so I hope you like the video. <laughs> so, we know that it does actually work. So it does work, it just so happens that this $5 adapter uh, is better than this apparently like $13 speaker so That's interesting. Okay, so now we're gonna turn both of these off All right so, Now both of these are off Now we're gonna see if what happens it or we're, we're gonna see what happens if you put the uh, actual Oh, did it? Oh, it already connected. Well, that makes it, uh, life easier. We're gonna see what happens when you put the actual phone inside of the tinfoil like what people do in the movies. So. The song, by the way, is Laserhawk. Or, sorry, the song's Overdrive by Laserhawk. Great, uh, great song to listen to. 
So, we have it in the first layer. This is the last thing we're testing. Might as well go, go crazy. Let's see, did we also lose connection on the Apple Watch? It disconnected. It straight up disconnected. The Apple Watch is still connected. Let's see if I can ping. Okay, so it cut off and straight up disconnected from the speaker. Now granted, this is a cheap speaker. I don't have any super expensive speakers because I, I like headphones. So, actually speaking of headphones, nah. I left them upstairs, so that's crazy. So now, what? Let's see. If I unwrap it, will it automatically connect like it did before? Oh, the phone's not scratched. So if I take it out, that's so cool. So uh, we found out that yes, it connected. Okay. So we found out that tin foil, or sorry, aluminum foil can actually block Bluetooth signals. Apparently, uh, really cheap ones, I guess it's just a bet on how the antenna is made. So it worked with this, and the phone was actually able to block it with this, or block, uh, or the tin foil was able to be, aluminum foil, sorry, was able to block the phone from outputting stuff but not to the Apple Watch, which I guess it does uh, help the idea of that it's the antenna inside of the actual module. That's the reason why it's so weak. So, yeah. That's really cool to find out, the fact that it still does work just by, uh, what do you call it, the same idea of why AM radio gets blocked, which is the fact that when you're sending out a pull, uh, signal, a Bluetooth signal, it still is some sort of wavelength. And items like metal and well, you know, let's just stick with metal. Metal is a very good conductor, and the reason why Faraday cage works is that it intercepts that signal and dissipates it through the material. Granted, there's a whole lot of stuff with Gauss's law, Maxwell's equations, and I took ECE 603 and 602, so it's pretty painful to explain it mathematically wise, but there is actual reasoning and understanding of why it works. and also has to deal with magnetic fields, which is really, really cool. Oh, and also Faraday's law. I forgot about that. So, yeah. So there actually is math behind this explaining how to do it. I don't know how to do that yet, but I do understand the reasonings why. So, yeah. Uh, if you're still watching, thank you for watching. This is really cool. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.